Hello folks and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Benzene's timing system. Um, I thought I would jump on here and basically give a short uh, tutorial on the setup, um, a run through the sort of software stuff and hopefully it will give people a bit of an idea on being a wee bit more confident at setting the clocking system up. Uh, I first purchased this in April time, um, got it by Jim Savage. Um, he had a deal on it so um, I went ahead and bought it for, it was really uh, a box, a Christmas box for my father for, for Christmas obviously. Um, but until then I didn't really touch it, um, it sat in a box wrapped up and I have pulled it out, I've tried playing about with it and getting an idea of the ins and outs of it. So um, without uh, further ado, we'll get into the video. So benzene, um, what is it? Uh, for those that are maybe new getting into the sport or maybe have no idea of what the clocking system is, um, benzene have been around for I think 150 odd years um, and they have developed timing clocks and whatnot throughout th that time. Um, lately in 20, 2019 um, they brought out the, the sort of new and improved M3 uh, clock and again more I think it was maybe last year, the year before they brought out then this M2 which is the smaller version of the M3. Um, obviously unboxing it, um, what you get in a box um, between the clock and the smart hub, they are two separate, two separate items but basically what you will get is your clock and also your this here is the smart hub um, within the packaging this is the wire that is your power adapter so it plugs into your smart hub in that also you get a two split cable um, into one so I will show you um, in the video how to actually connect your pad to that. Um, it is very simplistic in terms of its usage. Um, everything is a touch screen pad so you do get a pen and on that pen it has like a wee rubber shoe that you can use that or you can use just your fingers. When you pour it up as I say our power goes to the smart hub which then the two pin so this is like a two way pin set um, one goes into the smart hub the longer of that cable goes into your clock and then you have this separate cable connection that goes into your benzene pads um, obviously you need wires, you know, depending on how far you're running your clock. Um, so we have a couple of leads that basically run from this shed down through our pigeon sheds. Um, and they are connected through these. But I think generally speaking, um, it's more the software side of it. Um, getting set up with the smart live so I will just go ahead and jump on the software and show you the setting up of that so basically when you've done all your setting up and um, powered your system on um, you'll want to obviously log into the website um, this website is basically 
the program that you can get on any source of device, your phone, your iPad, your laptop, whatever connects the internet really. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you type into your search bar mypigeons.benzine.live and this is what you're greeted with and what you're going to do is go to login and obviously i have an account already so when you don't have an account you just come down to the bottom here where it says register for free and from here you are going to enter your details so you need sorry you need your email address and um, because what happens is when you create this it will send it will send you um a verification on your email address so make sure you do get that right um just put in your details first name last name and what your username is going to be so when you log in to the app uh, on your computer on your phone whatever it needs to be um, just create a username that you're going to remember uh, your language obviously for me um, that is going to be English so English and then obviously your country um, to be honest there's quite a lot of i think there's every country in this so if you are not part of the uk or an english-speaking country um you'll not have to worry finding your account so basically create your password um because the password has to obviously have a capital letter in it and at least one number and um, again make that memorable because obviously my advice would be to write everything down on a bit of paper so you can keep it on you um, and store it and um, tick these boxes this is just your exception of the terms and conditions and then just click registered so when you I did make um, a dummy account I think and um, just to show you basically what you're greeted with um, so give us two secs and you log in so basically when you come here and um, you will more than likely get a verification email so you have to go in verify that your email account is yours um, and this is basically what you're greeted with this is your profile okay and um, obviously when you open it you need to actually connect your loft and um, your loft to your clock so basically you're going to go into here and this is where your details um, come into play so again the fancier's name, I mean, we are Jim and boy. Um, race name, what you race under, so Jim, um, can't even spell, sorry, Jim boy. Um, I mean, again, that there can be Jim boy's loss, whatever that that. If you see on the clock, that's the title on the top of the clock. Um, getting your coordinates. Um, I always seem to have an issue from being able to pin it. So my advice would be um, to go on to Google Maps. And basically, when you go into Google Maps, um, obviously search for where your loft is um sorry the internet in this shed's a bit slow um so doesn't matter where you are in the world you can basically
pick up anywhere at all. So if you are for talk's sake, what I normally do is I layer it to get um the actual live view, sorry. So you have your map, you can basically go directly down into where you would like to get your measurements um, when you click here click on that and that gives you your longitude and latitude so basically you go back in to your software and you type this in so just copy and paste this 54 Two six fifty four by thirty eight no point oh yeah five and then again the same with your your latitude. because the internet in this field is for some reason slow today and then and you just then once you input all that save changes and you are good to go so that's you basically registered in um, again this is what you're sort of graded with but <coughs> Excuse me. Um, obviously, you now need to connect the clock um, to the software. So when you go into here, um, again, it'll give you another pop-up menu, and you basically have to to create. This is where it. You need to obviously go back to your clock, um. And I will show you um, how to access that. So that live ID and password basically links the software um, to your clock. So that's why it's important to make sure that you input it correctly. Um, to do that, it's literally into your settings, your, your system. Uh, up into settings sorry it's just and then basically click into your live ID and basically on that system where you have your live ID and your password you basically punch that in there and save it to your clock and that is you all set so basically what that will do is as i said um it will connect your loft to the system and i am just going to now log out of this a second and log back into my own profile oh. log out please thanks probably have to shut all that down um sorry excuse me folks use it no you can't So, when you are connected and you're connected to your clock, um, you will get your three items here. Um, one is your races, your training, and your smart love connection. Uh, when you go into your smart love or smart smart hub, 
Um, there's these drop down menus um, to easily access your loft and what's connected and what's not. So you literally click into Smart Loft and this will bring you into what is all connected. If there is anything offline, if you highlight this, the ones in red mean that red dot means it's offline, meaning there's no connection to it. So when it's in green, that means there is a connection to it. So when you come to basically connecting your pads up to your clock, um, there's a couple of items here that you can look out for to make sure everything is working and working properly. So on the top side of the clock here, um, it's a case of you have your name of your loft um, and this sort of it looks like a signal and um, that is actually your antennas and um, how many is connected or if there is none connected and um, beside it is the gps signal of your smart hub and um, what strength it's getting you obviously have your date and time and then your ui um is in whether you're training or racing so when it comes to connecting your clock um i have found sometimes what is best to do is basically take let me zoom out a bit take this two pin the sort of two connection lead that you had one plugged into your smart hub one plugged into the clock then the other one is for connecting your pad to. So it's literally, you will see these two sort of safety locks that make sure that the clock doesn't um, disengage when you put it in. So it's a case of popping it in like so. If it holds it out, mate, there we go. And then you literally twist them on and that locks basically this in place so you'll not have to worry about it disconnecting and um, usually after this what I tend to do is just literally take the plower plug out wait a couple of seconds and then pop it back in and by doing that what that normally does is it registers the pad um, depending on how many pads you have two usually you will have and um, this is where your signal as I said the we let me zoom in for you this is where the, the signal will now say one because you have connected your pad and um, if you have two it will say two um, same again I will just go over some of the settings within um, the clock the clock is literally You've got a home, your pigeons, and the system. So when you click into pigeons, this is all your pigeons that you'll be putting on your clock. The best thing about benzene is all your ETS rings you can do literally from your house, which is fantastic because it saves you, you know, running about trying to get, you know, maybe someone to do them for you. It's real easy um, and there's not much that can go wrong. So to add your pigeon, you obviously need um, your ETS ring. So your ETS ring, and basically what you wanna do is if I can zoom in to make sure you see okay. Okay. Basically what you want to do is go into management and it will ask you to register a new pigeon. 
and when you go into here this is where you get the opportunity to put in the details of the pigeon so it's life band basically what country you're from um, as I say uh, I think it has every country near enough in the system so you pick your credentials which ours is IHU so with if I can get to I so IHU because we are the Irish Homan Union um, this is normally sometimes people have letters after their IHU we are or letter within the ring number so we are normally IHU for this year it'll be 23 N and you put your N what year the pigeon was born so this year it'll be your 2023 young birds and then it's a case of putting that ring number in and hitting your check mark hit ok you can change the sex if it's a cock or a hen um, you can also go back into it and change it if it if you've made a mistake so that is a good option if you do do that you can pick your color of pigeon um, the only thing with this it only allows you to add four letters in that box so you will have to shorten maybe when you're writing checker or melee or any other sort of color um, so when you've got all the details in correctly you literally hit the chip ring and it will tell you to hold the chip ring over um, when you do do this it's a case of it bings it'll, it'll bleep the clock and the chip ring code will be highlighted here um, with the chip ring and then you just click save and it will be within your coupled section so for talk's sake that's the way it will come up um, okay so if you haven't got your rings already ordered or have them on you you can just add all your pigeons on to the clock and they will be in the not coupled side so when it comes to putting ETS rings on the pigeon um, and to synchronize the ring to that pigeon they will be all listed in here so it's a case of you can go ahead and put all the ring numbers in and then when it comes to when it comes to um, putting the ETS ring on then that's you um, you, you you will find the pigeon in here and then it will go into your coupled section system this gives you just an overview of what is all connected and everything is working as it should um, I am going to try and find a chance because within this okay it's making a mockery out of me there we go Within this, it will give you, as I said, everything that's connected to the system. So your benzene M2 clock, live Smart Hub 5, your benzene in, which is the, the it's basically the Sims card within your uh, Smart Hub. Um, that's what sends you messages um, to your phone or to your iPad or to whatever. Um, that sends it through the GPS um, system within this it also shows you your uh, software uh, version your hardware version and basically that allows you to see whether you need to update your clock or if your clock is up to date um, then you've got your voltage output and your series number as well so within this then within this you can then go into your settings where basically you can change 
a few things within this um, device settings you can change obviously the brightness the the sort of the sound how much sound you want to come out of it you can set your language set your time and date you get your seasonal map which is obviously the, the, the credentials that go into the software um, that's your Benzin Live again make sure when you register on on the software on your computer that when it gives you your live ID and password you come into here and you put that in and that will synchronize your clock with your software obviously this system the M2 uh, only allows you to run one fancier um, on this system I know uh, the M3 it can run multiple so maybe if you and your son or you and your partner want to race separately but use the same clock then I think the M3 is the choice for you um, you can also access your printer settings um, I don't think you have to worry too much about that and then this is just your system logs of what has been going on if there's a fault if something disconnects if something connects it just gives you an outlay on viewing that information so as you can see within the settings um, you have an option um, to do an antenna test um, just over here on the right um, Benzene do have uh, an antenna tester device um, that you can buy but if you don't have one of them a simple ETS ring will do um, it's quite simple once you connect everything and everything is registering up here um, you've got uh, one pod connected or two pods or three pods you can basically go into your system, attend a test, and all you're going to do is take your ETS ring and simply hold it over the top and you will get the signal coming in. And actually on the clock it will show you where you're holding the ring on either side of the clock. Um, what I actually love about it is the fact how the signal, how far off your ETS can actually be off the pad. So if you see here, sorry, I'll just get it stable. And that was it, picking it up slightly. But you can move it across. And I think it was something like four inches or so off the actual pad definitely definitely um, you will not miss a pigeon um, off this system so I thought I would jump into the software side of things just to show you a bit of a rundown on how things are used and um, so this basically gives you an outlook of basically what's been happening and um, it gives you obviously your data your data on uh, your races, your training, and information on your smart loft, um, basically your clock and, and your pads. Um, if you go up to your drop down uh, menu, you can basically come in here and view all the pigeons that have been registered on your clock. Um, you do get a symbol here um, that if the pigeon is active, as in racing, training, whatever it is doing, or if it's been injured, or if it hasn't returned, or if it has been deceased. Um, uh, it's a good way of just stamping that in. If you know a certain pigeon hasn't came home, you can just put in there that it is missing. Um, when you do click um, in to your bird, um, obviously I will have 
nothing on it as yet because there's been no racing or training um, but this basically gives you an overview of how the system works and this is what I I think is is fantastic with it um, because you can go in here and you can put a, a upload a, a photograph of the pigeon um, so you can obviously know what it looks like um, you can obviously put um, cage cards for different shows um, that you attend and you have it on show this is just a medical record if you've inputted you know being missing or injured or what um, you can come in here and add the name of the pigeon who bred it uh, the color what sex it is and just a brief description of that you can obviously go ahead and share it with um, other fanciers or other people if you want to enclose that information for people um, but basically on this side um, you would have to obviously add the parents of the pigeon on your profile when you come back into pigeons um, it can give you a system here to add a pigeon um, I don't really know too much about it as yet um, because I actually tippled into the breeding um, pedigree software that they have an offer um, and I will get into that um, very shortly but basically you can add, add in the father and mother's rings and the siblings and the offspring um, down here um, this will basically give you an overview and as I say this is where the technology that th that this clock has is just phenomenal and um, you can basically once you start you know racing um, you can come in here and see the performance over the season um, performance over two seasons or if it's an older pigeon um, you can see it's lifetime performances over racing um, the top 10 will give you a percentage of the top 10 birds um, so definitely fantastic obviously if you want to sort of search for pigeons you have the filter um, option here that you can search by your pigeon and um, mainly by its status what's missing what's been injured and um, you can get basically your average of distance flowing um, you know you can actually track now what how many miles your pigeon does throughout a race season um, which again all I can say is it's just fantastic into basically the training side of things um, what you can do is you can get velocities and whatnot worked out on your training and um, again because this is brand new to us uh, <clears throat> we are haven't done any training haven't done any races so as time obviously goes on when we start training pigeons and um, we will get more information so when you click into your training um, Basically, what you'll do is that IU on your clock, it, it, where it said um, start training, you push that um, and away you go to your training destination. Um, the management, you can come home um, from your training and you can basically import all the details that you want to. Um, I will show you briefly on your phone if, if you want to do it on your phone you can do it on your phone also um, but if you don't have that access and only have the access from doing it from your computer at home then this is the best way to do it so basically you can type in training name so if you're away 30 mile 40 mile whatever or a certain area that has a name you just input that there you drop down to here and this is your distance so again when you're using your phone you can literally hit get my location that sends the gps signal up and connects to your smart hub and it will register basically where you are in any part of the world 
Um, <clears throat> if you want to do it manually, um, again, you come home and you haven't hit it on your phone, you can come and do it in here manually. You literally <clears throat> zoom in to maybe where about you say where and basically click on that and it will give you a bit of a preview on your map and then give you your mileage um which is fantastic again just it blows my mind that we're at this stage of you know so much happening within the pigeon side of things of the software and everything that you can use for that uh basically what you can do then is when you go back into this software this will give you your velocity on your training how quick the pigeons were what time they were clocked in um and um i think it it, it works pretty much the same for racing um when there's a race on you'll click on to the race and this uh, menu will pull up and then you go to you go to your your settings and you can either obviously get the latitude and long latitude um, mileage to the race point um, so you get precise uh, indication of where they were liberated um, or you can basically do it manually um, as well you can obviously if you have this on your pc and you have xl you can basically download it to um, your computer and it will transfer it into Excel. So as you can see, that is pretty much easy navigated round. Um, it may take a wee while to get used to obviously setting it up from the standpoint of on your phone, but it's got the same emphasis on the computer. Uh, coming out of this, um, again, your smart loft, um, this basically allows you to see what is all connected, um, and make sure everything is running as it should. Um, I did briefly say that anything that is marked in red, um, means it's not connected so you might have to do a bit of troubleshooting around finding maybe one of the wires that it has connected wrong um so it's good that that shows you on the screen um tools um these tools i haven't really went in too much um i don't think they have anything for us to use as yet because it, for some reason it seems to bring up Scottish flying clubs um, so maybe that's something that they're also working on um, you can come in the lost pigeons and see that people have reported um, pigeons through the system and um, it's something I never heard of until I actually logged into the site so uh, it could be something worth checking um, when you get your system up and running. But in terms of the whole software, that's basically it. Um, there's so many things that you can play about with um, and it just takes some time to get used to it. Uh, this um, IPFN number, um, this is your dedicated sort of loft number so if you say send pigeons to a one loft race and um, you can track them on your app on your phone and make sure you get the notifications on your pigeons timing in um, I will briefly go through the app um, once I'm done here so as I said the mobile app is very similar um, to the actual software that you have on your computer um, basically I have two apps um, the one on the bottom left here is a smaller version of the website um, Benzine Live 
as I said, this is where um, if you have your phone when you're out training um, at the liberation site, this is where you can go in, go to your management, and then literally pick, get my location. That will send it to the GPS um, satellite and pick up basically where you are. So it's really, really, really handy. Um, that's all you need to do. Just go in to your profile, your dashboard, and it'll ask you, you obviously your username and your password and just log into it and it bring up my pigeons, log in and that's you, good to go. Um, the other app here is the, bind the Benzing Live, um, the notification. Um, so basically when you are out training and you're on your way home, um, this will basically message you um, to the birds have arrived at such and such time. Um, let me see. So there's your list um, of benzene <coughs> um, positions of pigeons and whatnot. Um, again, it's the same thing for logging into this. Um, you just need your username and the password. And that's you logged in. The thing with this app is when you go into your settings, um, this is where if you're sending to one law of races, um, you can basically obviously pick what what whatever whatever uh, race that you're involved with. Um, I'll just hit this for dog's sake. Um, and your name or your syndicate is on it you basically highlight your name or whatever results you want from certain pigeons or from certain syndicates um, when you highlight them during that race season then you will also be forwarded um, messages to this app and it will allow you then to view your pigeons in the one love race I think that is why this number up at the top the IPR IPFN number um, is specific to you because that's your law of number and I think that when you do one law of races um, you can basically um, link that with your pigeons uh, that side of it I'm not really sure because we never do any one law of races but as I say the the side of after sales at benzene is fantastic and you know you just have to message Thomas or Jim or whoever you are or whoever your sort of distributors are in your country and um, just get in touch with them and they should hopefully help if you are struggling to find out who it is you just go on to benzene cc and this is their actual website benzene's um actual website and you basically go in and look at partners and you can obviously pick where you are so for us here in northern ireland we have mrs dorothy smith um and it gives you Contact details down in Ireland is Martin Emmett and for the likes of Great Britain is Jim Savage and Kevin King. So as I say, hopefully that explains the app towards um, getting yourself on board with it and um, getting your notifications pushed through to your phone. So. Yeah. So that's us folks, um, I hope the, the video um, gives you a bit of information on how to set up the, the benzene clock. Um, if it's something you do struggle with, um, please do drop a comment below and I'll try to assist you as best as I can. Um, the only thing really is, is if you do have issues with it, um, 
Thomas Zimmerman or Jim Savage or Dorothy Schmitz over here. Um, the after sale side of things is pretty much um, brilliant. Uh, I can text Thomas or Jim on Facebook and within an hour or so they're usually back to you um, with some form of help. So uh, the after aftercare is very, very good. Um, but as I say, if I can help, uh, please don't be afraid to ask a question. Uh, so thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.